Glory to God. Yeah. 
Praise God. So glad to see you all. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. I'm so glad I'm here. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We thank God. We praise God. Amen. This is Father's Day, but we thank God for our Heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. I think before we go too far, Amen. Someone had a dedication they wanted to make today. Amen. They had a song they wanted to sing. Amen. And, uh, you know, people sing for all different reasons. Some sing because they have a good voice. Some sing for fame and fortune. And some sing just because, amen, they like to sing. But I sing because I'm happy. Has anybody else here saying, oh, you're happy? Praise God. It sounds good to you, regardless of what it sounds like to somebody else. If I had just one witness, I'd be happy. Amen. I say, because I'm free. See, now all the free people should have jumped up on the feet then. Huh? Are you listening to me? His eye, his eye is on. Come on, brother. The sparrow. Help me out. And I know he watches over me. I say, I say, because I'm happy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I say, whom is not so free is free indeed. Hallelujah. Is another hallelujah in here? Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you, that's how you get your 
your blessing. Amen. We're going to praise him. Hallelujah. So you got to learn to praise him. Yeah. When you learn to praise him, yeah. when your praises go up, the blessings yeah. come down. Amen. No praises going up, and no blessings coming down. Shout yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Got to praise him. That's why the word said all things. In all things, give thanks unto the Lord. I'm going to praise him. Praise be to God. I'm not going to cheat him. I said, I'm going to praise him. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Do I have another praiser in here? Yes. Do I have another praiser in here? Hallelujah. Can you give me thanks? Yes. Uh, can I be dead? Yes. Sleeping in my grave. Yes. Well, early this morning, good God Almighty. You know what he did, Elder? He touched me. Help me, Bishop. Come. He touched me. Oh, something happened. I say you sound late. And now, and now, and now, I know. He touched me. No, I just needed the tune, that's all. <laughs> Here we go. 
here we stand, hand in hand, standing on the solid rock, not sinking sand, a pudding old. Trust in Him, oh Him, oh Lord, teach us to trust in Jesus, and we'll never be the same again. <laughs> Um, the song that I sung, uh, Pastor Marie Hayes and I wrote this song way back in, in um, Faith Revival Center. And he used to come and play, so they used to sing this. <clears throat> Everybody knows this one. You can turn it. This for Pastor Father's Day. <clears throat> Eternity begins the day you find him. The Christ, the Son, the Bless of Mary's womb. The fear of death, the fear of the bondage broken. Oh, and he with victory rose up.
Amen. 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 Praise be to God. I said she's saying that she's set. And that's right. According to the word of God, that's where we are seated with Christ Jesus. High above principalities and powers. The rulers of the doctors of this world. Praise be to God. I said praise be to God. Anybody sleeping? Praise be to God. I'm already here. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to turn the service over the hands. A bishop, praise God, Pastor, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give him a kick off. Praise be to God. I don't want to get to him down in low gear, so I love to praise him. Yeah, I love to praise his name. I love to praise. And she said, but I'll find out for you. Amen. She did. 
And I thank God for Mother Spellman. So, Pastor, on behalf of me and my wife, just a little something to say Happy Father's Day. We love you. We pray that you wear it. Wear it well. And wear it well. Oh, my God. Bless you. Amen. So, when you walk into these churches, you'll walk in in full attire. <laughs> Amen. You know, it's, it's the full collar clergy. It's not the hat, not the tag, it's the full collar. They call that the pastoral collar. Amen. We thank, we love you, Pastor. Thank you so much for all that you do for us over the years that we have been here in Grand Rapids. Thank you. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Smith. And I want to say to all of you, thank you, Bishop. Praise be to God. I just want to say to the glory of God, you know, you know, uh, I'm not a complainer, but I thank God for, for Bishop because he's been here a long time and he jumps in. And I thank God for the Smiths. Yes. I look for them. Now, I don't wish anything bad, but it's all right that the church still been closed. You know where you can come to praise God. And the Reese's, I thank God for you all. But I thank God, amen, because this morning, you don't know, amen. What responsibility lies in God? God bless you. You don't know what responsibility lies on the leadership. Praise God. Y'all see me? Amen. But you don't know what else goes along with. Amen. Just seeing me here. Amen. I want to say to sister, to some, to the daughters, you know who you are. I don't want to start calling names, but to most of all of these daughters, I have no, we have no men. Bishop and I, the only two men here, praise God. And I heard Bishop said during the wedding, praise God. He passed by, he saw Sister Scott, that shed is no like a man. <laughs> on the sidewalk. Side Why? Because we had no one to do it. Praise God. Amen. And we're praying, we're praying that God will send some men. This morning, this morning after I got out the shower, I said, I'm, I'm telling you, I didn't want to get up, get dressed, and come over to you. I just felt that worn out. Praise God. Amen? Amen. Don't look at me like it's strange, but it's not. No, you Praise God. But I thank God for those who try to help. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's more than just opening the doors and walking in. That's right. It's more than that. It's much more than that. Praise God. Amen? So I thank you, Bishop, and Sister Barbara. I'm telling you, I don't know, but it ain't gonna be very long. You're gonna jump up and down, and when you stop, you ain't gonna stop. Praise amen. God. Amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. Amen. Praise in God. Thank you. And I want you to know, I'm not saying this in just in your presence, mm -hmm. but you ever on my mind. Yes. When I'm praying, I'm praying to sister spell and throw her crutches down and you'll start you'll start pushing that chair. I saw a lady before I left the house. Going up the street, pushing her wheelchair. And I thought about the sister Bob. Praise God. <laughs> I thought about Sister Bob. Praise God. And that that's that's yours, Sister Bob. That is yours. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That is yours, not later, not on the other side, but on this side. Praise be to God. Amen. 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 It's all, the work is already done. Yes, it is. Yes. The work is already yes. done. Yes. Praise God. Praise God. So I want to get out of the way. But again, I thank you. I thank you. And I was saying to one that daughter share, the, the reason I, I drink so much, because there's so much here to have to be done. Amen. If not one person called me about this, about that, amen. Someone has called me about something else. Amen. I can say, Father, Father, they've been crying for the last week and a half. They need somebody here to meet them. Praise be God that they may do what they do. Because they need to, they need to do what they do. Let the place be saved in case of a fire. I don't know how we get a fire. We ain't got no stove here. We don't cook here. We're getting still. They want to be saved. And it's, it's a lot of other things. Amen. As you can see, this place is nice and clean. 
That's right. You don't show him the whole picture. That's right. If you show just a little bit, don't worry. He knows how much he showed you. Stay right there. He's going to come back and get another little clip. Yes, he does. Amen. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for Pastor. We thank God for the real rock. As I always say, the real rock has been has been good to me. The love me. You all have been stuck with the wife and I. And I thank God for you all. There's not many churches that put their arms around you. Right. Amen, somebody. There's not many churches that do that. You can walk in some churches, and there's so many people, there's thousands of people. Some church got thousands and thousands of members, and I'm still trying to figure out how a pastor could pass a thousand people. I ain't figured that one out yet, underneath. I'm still, I'm so far from going to I'm still trying to think, how in the world you can pass that over a thousand feet? 1,500 foot. I mean, Moses couldn't even do it. Moses had to buy it before he left each other. Am I, am I right, Elder Reese? Well, he had to divide the people, all the thousands of people, he had, to, he had to divide them into tribes and put men over each group of tribes. So how in the world can one pastor pastor 1,500 foot? That's not my message today. But I thank God and I praise God. Let me let me see if I can get these folk on the line. I'm supposed to be on that line at one o'clock. So I'm going. God, we praise God for sound, for sword of the spirit ministry. Y'all are on also while I'm in service, preaching to the people of God at Prevailing Rock, so we're doing a double header this morning. Amen. We praise God for sound, sword of the spirit ministry that's on the line. Amen. We thank God. Yes, yeah, see, y'all don't realize I have them in my ear. We thank God for the sword of the spirit ministry that's on the line, and we praise God for you. Well, turn in your Bibles, if you will, to John, St. John chapter 10. Verse 17. And I want to talk about a good father. A good father. You know, I, I was not raised with a father. You know, folk that talk about if, that a woman can't raise a man, I beg to differ with you. My mama raised me. She was the father and the mama. He was the, she was the father and the mama. And she used, when I got, as a child growing up, she got the switch, she got the belt, she got the wire hanger, she got the high heel shoe. And then as I got older, she got her fist. But I want to talk about a good father. And then I want to flip it a little, flip it to the spiritual side of it. John chapter 10, verse 17. We thank God for Pastor Nancy Jacob and Sword of the Spirit Ministry that's listening in on this morning. John chapter 10, verse 17 says, Sister Carter, get for me uh, 2 Corinthians 12 and 14, please. Uh, John chapter 10, verse 17, and it says, Therefore does my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it again. 
No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. Therefore, going back to the latter part of that verse, therefore does my father love me. Amen. Before you go this to Carter, go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. A father's love, a father's love. We know it's Father's Day, and, and I thank God he has allowed me to be a father over the last 12 years, now I'm the grandfather for the last 12 years, and the father for the last 28 years. And I learned so much being a father. Fatherhood is not something you learn. Fatherhood is something, it's like motherhood is by trial and error. There's no book on fatherhood. There's no, there, I don't care what Dr. Spock said. And none of them psychology, there's no book that can teach you how to be a father. A father, in order to be a father, you got to have a heart for your children. Amen. Hello in here. You got to be a you got to be, first of all, I can't say what I want to say because we are on the air. You got to be a man. That's right. <laughs> you talking about it. <laughs> Say it so they can hear it. I, I can't say it. I can't go where I really want to go because we're on the air. But we got to be a man. That's the first thing. To be a father. In order to be a father. Mm -hmm. Not a boy. And I mean all men. Catch my drift. All men. I'm a little perturbed. I've been perturbed for the last week or so. Something came across my Facebook page and, and I'm like, really? Make up your mind. You're confused. You got to be all, first of all, you have to be a man. And in order, when a man is a man, the first thing he does is to provide for his family. Amen. Amen. Huh? First thing he does is to provide. He is a provider. Outside of a protector. But I want to deal with the provider first. He's a provider. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, neither shall he eat. That's right. I don't understand how these so-called parents, the so-called mothers, can allow their sons to lay around the house and do nothing. I know that's right. You preach it right. I, I just don't get it. <laughs> and and, and, and they, they continue to provide for them. Mm -hmm. They continue to give to them. And then when they get to be a grown man, they don't know what to do. Well. Because mama done swallowed them. Yep. And daddy's too hard on him. But a true father is hard on his children. The Bible says a man lays up an inheritance for his children. Am I right about it? Y'all talk to me. If not, I'll be here till 5 o'clock tonight. Oh, no, that's all right. Yes, amen. <laughs> Wake up in here. The Bible says that he leaves an inheritance to his children. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But how much more? How much more has God, our Father, provided for us? Hey, hallelujah. How much so has God, our Father, provided for us? The scripture says, I believe it's over in the book of John. He said, if he provided for the birds of the field, how much more will he provide for you? That's right. That's what a father does. He provides for his children. If he's got to work 40 jobs, he'll provide for his house. God is looking in these last days, in this season, in this time, God is looking for real men. I still can't say what I want to say because we're still on the air. God is looking for real men. He ain't looking for broke wrist men. <laughs> He made Adam and Eve. I know that's right. All right, all right. <laughs> Not Adam and Mike. He's looking for real men. Yes, he is. And I believe this is why God had to do some house cleaning. I believe this is why COVID-19 swept through the land like it did. I was not disturbed, no, but didn't bother me. Because I knew God was house cleaning. And if you really took note, the 
man of God was dropping like leaves. I don't know if y'all were watching it. But God was cleaning house because he was real man. So a good father provides. A good father provides for his family. A good father is an example to his son. Jesus was an example. Yes, he was. He was the prime example, but he left the 99 to get that one. The, the, the Jewish man that when when the when the prodigal left home, he, he the child said, Daddy, I want all that you want that I, I'm I'm inheriting. And the Bible says that the good father gave it to him, sent him on his way. But in the but the moral of the story is what I like about the story, not the fact that he squandered his money, not the fact that he went to the pig pen, but the fact that when he got back home, that's what I like about it. When he arrived home. And the father saw him in the distance. Yes, he did. That good father said, Let's, we're going to party tonight. <laughs> Get the best coat. Get me that ring. I got a, my child is home. That's what Jesus says with, me, with the Bible. Says, the angels rejoice when one comes to him. He said, come on. He said, he said, I got one that came to me now. Let's get the best coat. It's time to bring me some praise. It's time to party because one person came to me. Yes. That's what a good father does. Yes. He accepts that child back. Yes. As long as that child is repentant. Amen. A good father makes the example of what direction that child should go. When you see a young man that's falling off this cliff, side of the cliff, so to speak, take a look at what his daddy has done. See what's going on in the family. Because a good father will show the example. He'll be the good husband. He'll be the provider. He'll be the disciplinarian. Y'all don't know nothing about that, do y'all? He, he'll be the disciplinarian. Don't you know God disciplines us because he loves us? He's our heavenly father. The, the song I said, we are, he is our heavenly father's children. He is our good father. He will discipline us when necessary. I don't know about you, but I've had a couple of spankings, D. God has slapped me upside the head a few times. Stripped me down to put me up. That's what a father does. Because he loves his children. How much more does God love us? I'm just about to. Give me Ephesians real quick. Chapter Ephesians 6 and 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the domination of the Lord. What did the scripture say? It says, fathers, don't provoke them, but raise them up in God. It didn't say mother, it said father. Why? Because he made man the head. Y'all. Right. Y'all are missing this this morning. God, I wish I could just preach it like I want to, but we're still on there. He made man the head. Yes, and not the tail. He made man the head. Hey. He made man to lead. But you know what the problem is? We got some weak, jelly back men that don't lead. And the woman got to step up. But, if, but brethren, if you would just step to the plate, get a hold to the bat, stand firm in the batter's box, that woman will fall in line. Because one thing I've learned over 28 years, that I've been with my wife, I don't know about anybody else, 
My wife wanted me to leave. When I was, when we first got married, I'm going I'm to be transparent just a little bit. When we first got married, I wasn't working. You know what my wife told me? I ain't married no lazy man. Yes, she did. She told me you're gonna, you, you, you need to get a job. We were staying in Hackensack right around the corner into my mother's house. She said, oh no, this ain't gonna work neither. I got to have my own and I'm not paying the rent. Hush over there in the corner. <laughs> yes, she did. She put me in the position to provide for her. That's right. And for our children. She wasn't accepting. Now, if you got to go in that type of place, God bless you. But he, she was not accepting project attitude. I know that's right. She said, oh, no, I'm not living. You're not putting me in no project. She wanted to achieve it. She put me in a position where I had to go and get a job and provide what God provides for us. God is in a position where he can bless us. But brethren, we got to take our rightful place. And we got to lead the people of God. We got to lead the people of God. God can't use no jelly back man. God can't use no sugar coated man. Read through the lines. God needs a man that will stand up and be a man. I remember as a child, and I'm through, I remember as a child, I, my, my, I, like I said, I didn't have a man in the house. My grandfather was not really a man to me because he drank Jordan dry and some. And every time he turned around, the undertaker was bringing him home because he was drunk. So he wasn't an example to me. But my, I, had a, I had an uncle that he kept the fear of God in me. And if I did anything, my mama didn't have to say no. All she had to say to me, wait till your uncle get here. That was one uncle I didn't play with. And he taught me how it was to be and what it was to be a provider, what it was to care for my family, and what it was to take care of my wife-to-be, which is now my wife. So what am I saying? God is our Heavenly Father. How much more? God will provide for us. He said, if you ask bread, I won't give you a stone. He said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Not yesterday, not the day before. Wouldn't you ask? He said, that, he said I, will, I will prosper you. I will keep you in perfect health. All you got to do is ask. Because he's our Heavenly Father. And the scripture says he left at 99. And he went and got that one. So fathers, I say to you today, look at Jesus. Look at your heavenly father. Be a man, be the father, be the person, be the leader that God has called you to be. And everybody that knows me, know, they know my wife will tell you. They know. I run my house. I'm the man of my house. I'm the head of my house. Got sister in law, they talking to me now. That's perfectly fine. You don't run my house. When you pay my rent, put food on my table, clothe my wife, put shoes on her feet, then you can tell me something. But I'm the man of my house. I'm the leader. That God has called me to be. That's why I can preach the way I preach. That's why I can live the way I live. Because I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And when you know who you are. Sword of the Spirit. When you know who you are. You can demand things to happen. Now I'm, going, now I'm, I'm done with the text. You can demand things to happen. When you know, y'all better wake up in here. I told y'all, y'all gonna make me preach to five o'clock. When you know who you are, 
You can, you can cause things to happen. You can speak those things that be not as though they are. When you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you realize I got power to change the atmosphere and the hemisphere. And if you hang around me long enough, I'll change your life. Woo! Glory to God. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't know. God moved the car, cornerstone this morning, so I walked in here. When you know who you are, when you know who you are, the devil can't even mess with you. He might try to send vibrations. He might, he might try to send vibrations, but he can't mess with you. When you know who you are, because when you know who you are. You recognize who he is when he tries to get in. And you'll speak to that devil and say, Devil, in the name of Jesus, back up on out of here. Take your baggage and go back where you come from. Because it don't belong to me. Because I'm more than a conqueror. In Christ Jesus, I have victory. I walk, I walk in authority. I walk in power. I can release those things that I need. Oh, it's quiet up in here right now. I can release those things that I need. Oh, bless his name. I can, I can open the doors of heaven's vault and speak those things into existence. Thank you, Jesus. When I know who I am. Do you know who you are? Are you still letting the devil run all over you? Do you know who you are? Are you still letting them put a headache on you? And go into the medicine cabinet for a Tylenol. I don't go to the medicine cabinet, I go to Jesus. Take that. Pastor taught me something. I don't know whether he realized it. He was preaching one Sunday and he said, Take that, take that thing and pull it off you and throw it off you. Yeah, if that heart is acting up, get take that thing and pull it off you. And throw it back to the devil where it comes from. You got to know who you are in Christ. You got to know that you are God's man. You are God's woman. You have authority. You have authority. Brethren, you have authority. As a man, you have authority. You have authority. Use your authority. Use it in your home. Yeah, God. Use it in your home. I did. That's why nobody in my house but me and my wife. You can't stay up in here. My house. I have the authority here. See, when we start to realize who we are in Christ, as I said, the devil can't do nothing with you. Stop accepting everything the devil throw at you. What's wrong with you? Every time the devil throws something, you take it. You claim it. You grab it. My hip, my ankle, my back, my neck. Don't claim it. Tell that devil by the name of Jesus, I'm healed. I'm delivered. I'm set free. Because my heavenly father has given me authority. He has given me authority. When a father raises his children, he raises children to know what authority is. And he releases them into the world to use that same authority. I do, I, look, I'm like my mother, I tell you about, I'm my mother's child. Just don't get me the wrong way because you'll see my mother rise up in me. I'm, that's what we need to be. I'm my heavenly father's child. Fool with me.
then you're going to see Jesus. You're going to see my spiritual authority at work if you mess with me. Hallelujah. A father's love. God loves you. God loves you. He loves you more than we'll ever know. And he's given you authority. Sword of the Spirit that's listening in, he's given you authority. Use your authority. Stop letting the devil walk all over you. Walk in your authority. Rebuke the enemy. Curse him from the root. Send him back to the pits of hell where he come from and all of his family members. You know, sometimes we bind the devil, we don't send it, but his family members are still hanging around. I want them all to go. But they ain't part of my family. You trust pastor on God's property because I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. God loves each and every one of you. I'm through. God love each and every one of you. A father's love. He loved us so much. He loved you so much that he's given you power. He's given you authority. And most of all, he's given you the gift of the Holy Ghost. God loves us. We have a problem. We're the ones that have the problem and you don't realize the love of God. Don't I don't, I don't think sometimes you really catch a hold to the love of God. So I challenge each and every one that's listening by own, that's sitting in this sanctuary. I challenge you this week. Take a moment and just sit back. Sit in the chair, your chair, whatever chair, your comfortable chair, your lazy boy, whatever, and just think about God's love. I guarantee if you sit there for about two minutes, you're going to hop up and holler. When you think about his love, it doesn't make you cry. How God loves you. Pastor Marie Hayes just sing a song. Only she can really sing it because she had that that heavenly soprano voice. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he do? Oh, how he loves you and me. God's love goes way beyond what we could ever perceive or think. <sighs> our Father's love. He is our Father. When you're going through problems, you're going through situations, you're going through whatever, hop up in daddy's lap. Huh? Some of y'all have, have, have daddy girls. Some of y'all have daughters and daddy girls. You know how daddy girls do? Daddy girls will hop up in daddy's lap in a minute. Because what? They're daddy's girl. All they know is daddy. All they know is daddy. They know daddy gonna protect them. They know daddy gonna provide for them. They know if mama say no, daddy gonna say yes. They, they know that something going on, I'm gonna tell my daddy. I'm telling my daddy. And daddy gonna come to her rescue. But how much more we hop up in our heavenly father's lap and tell daddy all about it. Will he come to our rescue? Because he loves us. Because he loves us. Because he loves us. God bless you, son. I the spirit ministry. I pray you enjoy the word. my love.
We praise God. Father, we thank you. We give you the glory. We thank you, God, for your love that passes all understanding. And God, we, we thank you that you loved us so. That you gave you. That you allowed your son to give his life. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Well, maybe you're doing about the, you're viewing by Facebook Live and you don't know Jesus. You don't know the Heavenly Father that I preached about this morning. I want to give you the opportunity now to give your life to God. All you have to do is confess your sins to him. Repent of your sin. Repent does mean a 190 degree turn from your sin. And ask God to forgive you. And ask him to come into your life. Take control of your life. And be a part of your life. If you have prayed that prayer just now with me, those who are viewing by Facebook, if you can pray, pray that prayer. The email address should be up. If not, please put it up. Write, write the church and let them know that you have accepted Christ and so they can give you more information. God, we thank you for those standing in this building. And we give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name. Maybe there's someone that needs prayer. You need to stand in the gap for someone. Come quickly. We're going to do this real quick. Nobody needs prayer? Well, praise God. Pastor's in your hands. 